George C. Scott is on our dais tonight, and I haven't the slightest idea why. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to figure this man. He refuses to attend the Oscar ceremonies, but he'll come to a dinner for a two-bit comic. <laughs> he's, a, he's a superb, superb actor. Um, I don't think anybody can forget the magnificent portrayal of the power-mad general and Dr. Strangelove. Then he went to that to the uh, great portrayal of in The Hustler and the most brilliant characterization. Seriously, I think in film history, the motion picture pattern. It's my pleasure to introduce George C. Scott, who will come up here and do absolutely nothing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Friars and honored guest. I think I should confess I feel a little out of place up here with all these marvelous comedians, but I must say that everyone here has done what they could to make me feel comfortable. <laughs> a little while ago, one of the very funny men here on the dais approached me and said, listen, Georgie baby, I know you're not a comic or an entertainer. Don't get uptight. If you need any help, if you need Somebody throw you some ad libs. Just look at me and wink. Now, I appreciate this. I really do. However, I think I'm going to try to go it alone tonight. But thanks anyway, Chad. <laughs> I think you should all know that I did not come here tonight to make fun of Don Rickles. Neither did I come here to trade barbs with Don Rickles because it would take a comedian to do the first and a true wit to do the second. Instead, I've come here tonight to say something nice about Don Rickles. And for that, you have to have an actor. <laughs> My friendship with Don goes back over 20 years. When we met, we were both studying acting at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts here in New York. I was studying there um, under the GI Bill, and Don was there on a sort of scholarship. He had received a gift certificate from uh, Mussolini. <laughs> back, back in the days when Don was at the Academy of Dramatic Arts, he was a man to be reckoned with. He was a man of ambition and determination, not this poor slob we're honoring here tonight. <laughs> Then, he was a man of fire, he was a man with drive, he was a man we all depended on, and he never once let us down. I mean, when you sent him out for a prune Danish, by God, you... <laughs> I never forgot his many kindnesses, and I also never forgot that more than anything else, Don wanted to be an actor. And when they asked me to do the movie Patton, I immediately suggested Don for one of the parts. I even helped him with the screen test. And he was superb. It was one of the most poignant scenes in the film, and Don played it brilliantly. The director, Franklin Schaffner, I remember he said he had only one comment. He said, Don, please, when, when Patton slaps you, please don't slap him back. <laughs> I really wanted Don in the movie because years ago, he tried, he tried to help me. He offered me a part in a picture he was making. At the time, however, I was... Uh, appearing here in New York in Eugene O'Neill's classic, Desire Under the Elms. Don tried to talk me into leaving the play and coming out to Hollywood <clears throat> to do the picture. And I remember his very words. He said, George, it's not much of a part and it doesn't pay much money, but before you turn it down, remember this. It is a chance <laughs> to work with Annette Funicello. <laughs> We have been friends for a long time, and you've provided me with uh, many happy moments. And I'd like to say something now that may embarrass you, but I mean it sincerely. On the surface, Don may seem to be brash and crude and insensitive. But believe me, if they ever cut this man open, they would find a heart of pure gold. And if they didn't, it would be worth cutting him open in. <laughs> And to you, George C. Scott, I skip you, Milton, because you are my idol. <laughs> I say 
away from my heart, George C. Scott. That's Patton. You made a fool of yourself. <laughs> George C. Scott stood on the screen in the great emotional picture starring George C. Scott and Carl Malden, who you objected to. <laughs> when you remember when you called me and said, why is he on the screen? I could play his part and do it great. <laughs> And he stood there. <coughs> That's right, Alan. Laugh your way to stardom. Your wife is leaving you. <laughs> but I said, hey, George, I'm talking. <laughs> and I kid him about Pat. And I predict he will win an Academy Award. I'll step out on a limb. No, no, no. What is this, a luncheon? <laughs> George C. Scott has said in that great scene, I'll never forget it, when all the men, listen! You can learn, George! <laughs> Sitting here tonight like you're Moses? <laughs> you're so great, make the crowd disappear! <laughs> I don't know who you are, kid in the front, but you're getting on my nerves. <laughs> I saw a little kid with a drip-dry shirt with no stay in the collar. What's your name, kid? Take your time. What's your name? Ron! What's your last name, Jim? You better answer me or the general will wipe you off! What's your last name, Jim? Take your time. Look on your underwear, maybe it's stencil. What's your last name, Jim? What? Jim Mulholland? I'm in the business 20 years. I don't have a joke for a dumbbell that's named Mulholland. What are you, a road? Hope you make a left and go right into yourself. But to you, George C. Scott, I say from my heart, don't wave the flag of surrender. You are a big star, be secure. Tell these people what you told me before the show went on. You don't need this. You are a big man and you're a great artist. I quote the words of John Barrymore, the late, great John Barrymore, who said, let the light leave the spot to thyself. Let thyself be thy spot. You know what worries me? George C. Scott's going there. That's true. 